Good morning, Eagle Nation. Here we are with Coach Matt Wilson for episode three of Big One Athletics in the Nail. Good morning, Matt. How are you today? Good morning, Brian. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? Doing very, very, very well. Um, been up and up and at it this morning. I know yesterday you went for a run. Did you, did you get a run in this morning already? Yeah, this morning, no. I'm going to try afternoon run this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, yesterday, it was a great way to start out the day, though. Try to always do something positive the first time of the day. There was a a Navy SEAL who put out there, like, always make your bed first thing in the morning, because at least if you come home, you've at least got a nice bed. Even if things don't go your way, at least you've got a nice bed to come home to. So start your day with something positive. That's kind of been my mindset as we've entered this unknown territory here. Sure, sure. And obviously, this is called Big One Athletics in the Know. So one of the things we want to find out is, you know, I know, I know about you, but tell us about Matt Wilson. How long you've been teaching? How long you've been coaching? How long you've been in the district? How long you've been in the area? A little bit about your family. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I've been teaching now for 21 years, uh, all at the same building. I'm at Highland Souders Elementary. Let's see. I taught, I think 19 of those years have been in fourth grade. Um, I've taught fifth grade and I've taught third grade. Uh, I just found my niche to be really fourth grade. And the cool thing about it is I'm a Souders kid. So I So that's been really nice. And, and it's, it's kind of a, a nostalgic in the way that I've seen a lot of changes in the district. I've seen a lot of things happen, but you know what stays the same are the kids and their passion for school, especially in fourth grade. They still love school. And that's what I really like about it. Um, but really, I, I, the only time I was away from this area was when I went to college. I went to college at Georgetown College in Kentucky um, and graduated from there. So I was away for four years and came back to my roots, did a lot of subbing um, in different areas, but um, Mr. Butler was my principal at the time. I did some subbing here and he was my old principal when I was a student. So it pays to be a good student and not uh, have any uh, bad marks on your record. So uh, he ended up hiring me uh, at Souders and, uh, and the rest is history. That's great. Hey, I lost your sound there for a little bit. We'll go on with the interview and I'll go back and watch it if Okay. We lose that part, then we'll just start over and do it again. All right. Sounds good. And then uh, you've been coaching baseball now for a while, right? This is how many years you've been coaching baseball? Yeah, so I believe this is uh, my ninth year coaching baseball. I started out in eighth grade um, with Jack Show, uh, the current head coach. Uh, we moved up to JV a year after that and really enjoyed that time as well. And, um, and, and now at the varsity level, uh, things are just I, – I, I love – my role is, is, as a coach, I believe, is to help inspire the kids. And so I may not know all the answers to uh, what your swing looks like and why, it's, why you keep popping up or um, how maybe your, your pitching mechanics need fixed. Um, but my role is to keep you going and to look beyond that. And when things go bad, how do you respond? And so I think that's really, really kind of my goal in, in, in all of coaching is to, even in the classroom, is to when you face adversity, how are we going to deal with it and how do we get better and learn from it? So uh, that's the part I love about it um, and dealing with kids uh, on different levels. You know, some of them I've had in fourth grade and now I have as a baseball player. Uh, and I love that, you know, you have a little background knowledge of them and, and where they come from. And that's really important because when you have trust with a coach, um, there's a lot of things that a lot of different avenues that open up and, uh, it makes for a good combination. Now, I know uh, the baseball coaches were the first to jump on Schoolology and put some of their, you know, their, their planning online. And I know you guys also use group texting and things like that. But how is that connection going with the kids? I know you guys are sending stuff out almost daily, it seems like. And it seems like you're getting good feedback so far. Yeah, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's a really – yeah, since we've been using it in the classroom, that's been kind of nice. Um, I think that being an old dog in the, in the, in this fight for, you know, I'm, I'm getting used to all the technology and um, I'm having to learn on the go a little bit. So whether it's in my classroom or using it with baseball, I think the kids probably have a better handle on it too. And I found that I, you know, cause we didn't have a Schoology 
uh, group set up yet. And so I uh, created one, asked Coach Schoen if that's something he was into, and he said, yeah, I think it's great. So we found easy ways to like post videos of, of different things the kids can work on. Uh, could be just an inspirational video. We've done a couple um, discussion boards where, uh, like, what's your favorite walk-up music? If you were to have one, uh, we did another one where it was uh, just tell interesting facts about you. And some some respond and some don't. And and I imagine that um, in this time where things are a little bit unsure, they may not have that on the back of their mind to check in as much. But uh, got a lot of members who are on it and and checking in. And we also still use Remind as well. So we're kind of double dip in, but we just want to make sure that we stay connected with the kids as much as possible. And then on a sad news, you know, yesterday the governor, you know, he, um, he announced that we're out of school now until May 1st. Um, that also indicates that that means we're out of spring sports at least until May 1st. I've not heard an update from OSHA yet, um, but I just can't stop to think about our seniors and, you know, what, what that could mean for them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that's one of the, the hardest parts about this is just as we get going and we, we're starting to roll as a team and I saw a lot of connectivity with each other and I really felt like this group had bonded well just in that short period of time. And um, we had a lot of momentum and then all of a sudden it's come to a stop. I think that's been tough and it's tough. It, you know, I'm going to be able to coach another team and and all those kinds of things. When you think about seniors or even juniors who are getting ready and want to go play in college later on, um, this is a big moment for them. And so <clears throat> I think just as long as, as the kids are able to put this in perspective and say that, hey, we're, we're part of something here that's never been done before. This has never happened before. And so there's just a lot of unknowns. If you can just kind of keep that in the back of your mind and say, well, you know, things could always be worse. Um, I, I still there's still a possibility of summer ball coming up. Uh, we're not sure about what that might look like either. So I just tell them to keep their heads up and, and keep looking for other avenues to get better. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do in your basement. And uh, in this time when we're supposed to be social distancing, if, if that's where you need to be to get better, then go do it. But it just your heart breaks for those kids who, you know, this is one last run that they're going to make and, and whether we get to tournament time and, miss those opportunities yeah it's tough it is it is absolutely tough and I know it's even tough for the parents especially as they were looking forward to to those moments um, so I guess just kind of keep looking on the bright side of things and, and how <clears throat> how fortunate we are to just hopefully uh, to build on this and to get better and hopefully summer ball for some of these kids even seniors will be able to take play, take part in some of those things sure. yeah w once all this passes and, and we have clearance to begin normal operations, whatever that looks like. You know, I'm hoping we can go back and do something special for our seniors. I mean, kind of early to plan that right now, but it's important to talk about it and for people to know that we do care for our seniors and we're gonna do all we can to help and support them down the road, whatever that looks like. Uh, if that means we have to play a senior game in July, then that's what we'll do. Um, yeah. But I'm open to do anything. I'm open to any feedback our coaches or community have as well. But I wanna make sure our seniors get the recognition that they deserve at some point even if it's late in the summer yeah i agree yeah and uh they've put in a lot of work man and, and that's that that's been the tough part and people just don't see it as a season you know they've they've been in the weight room since september and so mm -hmm. that's a lot of a lot of the kids have been doing that and putting in that extra work or they were involved in other sports and then you know waiting to play baseball and so that's been the tough one uh, but i do agree like if there's just something we could do inter squad scrimmage sometime you know when whenever things happen when everything kind of if we get back to normal or whatever. So uh, anything I think is good. If we can take, you know, if we can do something, it's better than nothing. So yeah. love to see interview you. Coach Wetzel, you know, before you, and he had talked about our baseball team being the hardest working program he has out there right now. Uh, if not the hardest, definitely at the top. You know, so I, you said that a couple of times in this interview that you've seen that work ethic as well. Yeah. Uh, and I, I try to, check in with coach Wetzel uh, from time to time. I love the program that he runs there. Um, the kids are excited to get in there. And I know that uh, sometimes there's, he does a lot of uh, cross training too, where, you know, Hey, it's not just helping you in baseball, but it's helping you in other sports too. Sure. And I think that's what the kids are getting out of it. Like this is something that is, is hopefully developing lifelong skills for these kids to come in, work out, get strong, be healthy. Um, that's one of the most 
the greatest parts about it. You know, a coach can only do so much. And by having that trainer there and to give them specific skills it is uh, to work on, it's been really great. Um, and, and that's the thing. Yeah, there's been a core group of guys, 12 to 15, maybe even 20, that go in there and work out every single time and just put in the work. And, and they get it done. You know, that's the biggest thing. It's not social hour. They go in there, they work. They might laugh a little bit here and there, but for the most part, they're there to get it done. Sure. Well, man, I enjoyed the time today. Eagle Nation, this is Brian Shelton, Athletic Director of Big Longer High School. This is episode three. Matt, I really enjoyed our conversation. Hopefully we can get back to some normalcy here soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brian. Take care. You too.